sure everybody's here. We are now recording. And my associate uh, is here with me if you have any questions at all. She will help as well, the celebrity spokesmodel of the photojournalism class. But what we're doing this week is this is going to be a fairly easy week, or well, at least the workload should be light. All we'll do is review for the test today. There's no, for the synchronous class, no class meeting on Thursday. Enjoy the long weekend. The test is there. Use the time to take the test. Use the class time to take the test. Nothing new. It is, you know, a three-day weekend, the only three-day weekend we're going to have until November, no fall break. So enjoy it. The test goes live tomorrow at 8 a.m. I have it all set up. Um, when you do the test, do it. You have to do it in one sitting. You have as much time as you need. Those of you who need a little extra time, call it up, leave it, go to lunch, have coffee, whatever. But, you know, just don't, don't shut it down. And when you're done, you're done. Um, and so, yeah, um, uh, if you have technical difficulties, I will be on call through Friday and I can reset the test if it shuts down on you. If your internet goes down, I can reset an individual one for you. If you have anything I do have to hear beforehand, I don't want to hear next week that you had technical difficulties. Again, that's just like work. I want you to, uh, I, I, you know, I want you to just be responsible. So that's what we got. Um, straightforward stuff, chime in at any time. Here is, do 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 the study guide, ta-da, here's the study guide. I have this posted, I will go over it with you and when we're done, you could chime in for a asking for more uh, information or further explanations and it will be on the recording. So for the test, I'm teaching right out of the book. Uh, so you have the book, you have the recordings, you have the PowerPoints, you have the study guide and the recording. So you have all of this material that should be building, you know, they, they all reinforce the same points. So um, you could refer to any of the things while the test is open. And because Canvas shuffles them in different orders, uh, it's real hard to cheat. It's real hard to cheat. Now, if 10 of you are sitting at a table somewhere, I can't stop you, but you're all gonna have slightly different tests. So anyway, let's go from the start. Elements of good history, fact-based, bibliographical soundness, uh, and a tight focus. Those are straight from the book. You can get those again. Bibliographical soundness means based on authoritative sources, not from QAnon. Uh, you know, uh, things that are, that people have proven. Uh, so, bibliographical soundness, good sources, fact-based, tightly focused, not all over the place. So those are the basic elements. What makes a good topic? A good topic is one, again, of a tight focus. We don't talk about the causes of the Civil War all that much. You take slavery and the Civil War, or economics, or uh, one small piece, narrow focus, um, something that people are interested in, 
and something that you could shed light on, something that your insights can provide something. How do you, and something that you can actually do if you don't have access to a, um, a library or good articles, don't bother. So good topic, type focus, something that you can do, something you can prove and something that someone gives a flying leap in a rolling donut about. Anyway, so that's, you know, a, a good topics. Uh, is history unbiased? No. How can you control for your biases? You recognize them. You recognize your own perspective. You recognize the bias of your sources. You find other sources that have different perspectives. These are all things that you can do to, if not eliminate bias, control it and minimize it and work with it. Again, admit your own biases, admit the biases of your sources, where they come from, find different perspectives, have people saying different things, which is why I really enjoy the, uh, the, the Bedford Forest assignment, because many of you do have different perspectives, and I'm learning all the time. So, I mean, that's, it's interesting for me. Is um, four supposed to be three? Well, four is supposed to be three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I eliminated one because I cut off some, I, I took off three because it's not on this test. Uh, I keep tweaking it every year. Uh, what is the problem with causation and cause and effect? Causation is um, in, in a historical or a psychological context. You, um, one thing does not cause uh, a historical circumstance. Violence in the streets of America today are not from one thing. It's right, racism, it's um, economic issues, it is a lack of training, it is a lack of uh, respect for everybody. There's not just one thing causing a historical phenomenon or a given problem. It's oversimplifying cause and effect. Things have many causes. So that's the problem with cause and effect. And you can never, in history or even in science, you can never really prove anything. You can show relationships and that, you know, um, that, you know, we're, we're um, like I said, I used from the book, why we speak English as the international language of um, commerce, because the, the English had more money and they, uh, you know, uh, were more aggressive and they were better at communication. Those are many things, but there's not one reason why we're speaking English as a world language. So, and you can't prove it. It's all ideas. So that's the problem of cause and effect. Can't prove it. And there are multiple causes for almost every effect. Three primary reasons history needs to be revisited. We first, well, look at, look at the Confederate flag. Our perspectives change. History moves on. What we think in, in 2020 is not the same as what we thought in 1980. You know, um, we have new information all the time. We're discovering things. We have new information. We have new methods, new technologies. So new information, three things. Information, new technologies, and new perspectives. Those are the three things that change um, history. Again, technology, perspective, and information. Those are the three things that makes us have to keep revisiting history. Okay, the basic schools. Nationalist schools look at a given nation and focus on, again, 
American history or Chinese history or Russian history. The nationalist school looks at a country and usually that country looks superior in that viewpoint. Progressive school looks at conflict in order to move forward. Say, yes, uh, America has, is the greatest country on the planet, except if you're a Native American. You know, you look at conflict and different perspectives. That's a progressive school. Developmental school doesn't care about any of that. That's looking at technology. Your textbook, uh, Kovarik, is a developmental book. It looks at the printing press. It looks at the telegraph. Doesn't look too much at the personalities. I add to that. So, I mean, but anyway, developmental school looks at technology. Consensus school tries to find, it's the opposite of pro progressive uh, school, tries to find common ground in uh, the different viewpoints. I try to do that. Gender and minority schools look at the um, experiences of, again, different people of different genders, minorities, uh, you know, uh, Latinx, uh, African American, LGBT, uh, women, white males. You know, so all of that can be, you look at those experiences. Romantic school isn't about falling in love. <sighs> Romantic school is about uh, people and personalities and how that drives history. So it's not about relationships so much, but it's about personalities. Copyright for your research. What is protected by copyright? Original and professional material. Soon as something is written down and is and it is written and it is original and identify which is identifiable is original and used for professional purposes, then it is copyrighted. Your essays can be copyrighted. You know, uh, I can't sell an essay that you have written because it's yours. So that's a good thing. Uh, what's in the public domain? Things that are older than 70 years old, which is why you find classical music all the time on videos because Beethoven's been dead for 200 years. Mm. 193 years, Beethoven's been dead. But anyway, uh, yeah, but his copyrights run out. So when copyrights have expired, things that you cannot see are, uh, are original. You know, if it's something that anybody could do, then it's not original. So uh, copyright run out, somebody, puts it in the public domain, like George Romero put in Night of the Living Dead. That's one of the reasons why there's so many zombie movies, because George Romero put Night of the Living Dead in the public domain. He said, go ahead, copy it all you want. Uh, facts. Facts are public. Nobody owns the facts. Now, if somebody writes a conservative piece based on the facts, that is their original idea. And if somebody has a liberal piece based on the facts, that's their ideas. Perspectives and opinions can be copyrighted, but no one owns the facts. Major exception, copyright protection, educational material. I can present YouTube videos and movies and all sorts of stuff uh, that's copyrighted in a classroom, but I can't sell uh, stuff for a profit. I can share it with you, but I can't sell it for a profit. Uh, historical narratives. Strengths of a historical narrative is it tells a story 
and people relate to stories, people understand things if you give them a narrative, if you give them a story. But going back to uh, number four there, a narrative is, is biased. You're putting somebody's story. You're making somebody a good guy and somebody else a bad guy. So the strength of a narrative makes it understandable, makes it compelling. Weakness, it may increase bias. But it's just, you know, but if you just give them just the facts, no one cares. It's not compelling. And just the facts, and this is a problem with news, just the facts does not necessarily increase understanding. Perspective does. So it's a constant balancing act between fact and narrative, whether or not it's history or journalism. Uh, narrative writing is, again, make, finding characters, finding conflict, telling a true story, but just the facts, just the day it happened. Okay, I'm on Lookout Mountain, and they have the museum at the end if they ever reopen it. And it shows the great big battle uh, that the North um, drove the South off, the, uh, the Union drove the South, south off the mountain. That's the facts in November of 1863. There you go. The um, perspective down at the bottom of the hill, General Grant said it didn't matter. The next day, Missionary Ridge, where they, where they cleared out the Confederates, that's the one that mattered. We have the beautiful battle above the, of the clouds here, and it's a nice narrative, a nice story of, of Hooker and Bragg and everybody, and the, and the house that got all shot up, but ultimately, and oh, that's, Again, the truth is we had a battle here. The facts are we had a battle where I live and I find bullets every now and then. Uh, there's, we had a battle here. The um, Union chased the Confederates off the mountain. That's the facts. Uh, the narrative is, did it make much difference? Probably not, but that's, where the story comes in. Are, what are the advantages of peer-reviewed journals and articles? You have people reviewing the facts and perspectives to find problems. So you know it is authoritative and that it's good um, material that has been reviewed. Does that make it unbiased? No, because all the professors who uh, look at these things they have their biases too, but it's been checked out. It's been fact checked. So it has been fact checked and thorough and it's as reliable as you can get. Disadvantages, a lot of these peer reviewed journals are boring. They don't, they're very poorly written. They're uh, sometimes hard to get. They may be copyrighted, they may be expensive. They may be hard to get, and they're, they're poorly written, uh, hard to find. So you've got to dig through them to get a good information. So the advantage is, is it's good and solid. The bad news is they're boring. Why should you engage in research? Uh, which is why, you know what? When we went online, it was recommended that I trash the essays and just give some Q&As on different topics, I ain't going to do it. I want you to do some research. Why? Because research compels you to find information yourself and use it to increase your own understanding. It looks good on your resume. Research is what you will be doing in business. If you're in finance, if you are in sales, you are going to research information to, on your products, on your companies. So research is a good skill. Secondly, again, it looks good on the resume, good skill. It's good for grad school. 
This is what grad, if those of you who want a master's degree or an MBA or a PhD, guess what? It's all about research. So it's a good skill, looks good on the resume and careers, um, helps your personal development and gets you into grad school. So that's why we do research. Okay, repeats. I'm happy to repeat for those of you who want, want to do it while you're here. Uh, can I get eight and nine? For which one? Eight and nine. Eight and nine, okay. Progressive school looks at conflict, looks at the, out, the, the uh, work of outsiders, the experience of outsiders. It's really largely a, an answer to a nationalist school. Nine, developmental schools technology. They don't care about people or politics. They look at the, at the technology and what difference the internet made or the cell phone made. That's developmental school. Can you do seven? Seven. Characteristics, nationalist school looks at a given country. Looks at the experience of the Americans or the Brazilians or the Brits. Looks at a, a country and usually makes that country out to be the, the, the important thing. Can I get one in five? Which one? Nine? So I just one in five. Which one? One in five. One in five. Elements of good history, tight focus, something that you could elucidate and, you know, a, 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 a tight, narrow focus, something that you can actually, th that you could shy, um, illustrate that's original, not repeat back the same old crap. Something, again, tight focus, original, and doable, that you have access to the information. Those are the important things. And what one in five did you say? Cause and effect. Historical phenomenon have multiple causes and psychological stuff. M multiple causes, and you can never really prove that one thing. But like violence, uh, uh, violence in the media. Does violence in the media make us more violent? It may have some influence. There are relations, but. You don't watch Grand Theft Auto uh, games and go out and drive your car off a bridge. It's not that simple. So psychological and historical things have multiple causes and you can never really prove the effects. What's 14? 14, copyright uh, educational material. And you can, I can show movies in class, but I can't put them on my YouTube. What's protected by copyright, original and protect uh, and original and professional material, public domain, fact, um, things put in the public domain, and old stuff. What was 16? 16. Narrative writing gives you perspective and character and understanding. The disadvantage, it isn't just the facts. It gives you some opinion and perspective, but when you put in perspective, you're putting in bias. So pretty much 15 and 16 are about the same. but these are the things to focus on. There will be 50 questions. So, and I only have 17 general things here, but again, I will ask about the bias stuff a couple of different times in a couple of different ways. So, I, things like, yeah. Can I get two, four, and six? Two, historical topic, tight, narrow focus, not too broad. And I find that in the essay. Don't talk about society or the media. Talk about, uh, talk about reality TV and its effect. Don't talk about the media. Take one part of it. Tight focus, um, something new, 
that you can, uh, okay, yeah, something that you can shed light on and something you could find information on and something that's doable. Uh, okay, two and then four, did you say? Unbiased? No, no, no. There is no such thing as, as unbiased history. There's no such thing as unbiased media. Um, there is, but how you work with it, you admit it, you find factual sources, and you find different perspectives to balance out any biases you may have. So that's three ways. Other stuff. Okay, it's all there. Let's see if I have anything in the chat. Do, do, do. We'll go back to this. Uh, okay, 10 and 11. Test is multiple choice and the, the, um, it is posted online on the class canvas. And I, I will record this session and I will post it with the answer. So the answers will be audio rather than I'm not just gonna type them all in. So it's up to you, it's multiple guess and, multiple, and, and, uh, and true false. I think I've done 10 and 11. Uh, so that covers, I think what we have in chat. Any other stuff? Again, as stuff comes up, you know, technical stuff, I'm here to help, but I'm also here to make you think. So good luck with it. And uh, we'll check in after, well, a week from today. Have a lovely break if I don't hear from you otherwise. You too. Bye. 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 See you, doggies.